following lecture was produced by Glorian Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. The Tower of Babel. The Tower of Babel is a topic written in the book of Genesis in the Hebrew Bible. The book of Genesis is a Gnostic book written by Gnostics because the whole book hides the mystery of that which as you know is a Hebrew word for knowledge which in Greek is Gnosis. So this book is a hundred percent Gnostic. Its myths hide a lot of knowledge. Remember that a myth is a coffer, a box that hides a truth behind a tale, behind a story. And this is how the book of Genesis was written. Based, of course, in events that happened in the past, but written in the way of, uh, in the way of stories in order to hide certain secrets, arcana, or arcana that uh, only those with knowledge will understand. That's why in this day and age you find a, a lot of uh, arguments, debates related with the book of Genesis. Because people do not comprehend it. They do not understand it. Because they do not have the clues in order to unveil these myths which hide a lot of psychological, cosmological, natural truths that uh, only the initiate can see clearly when walking on the path of the mystery of that mystery of knowledge. Here, of course, in this book is where we find in the chapter 11 about the story of the Tower of Babel. <clears throat> that is, of course, a very profound symbol that hides psychological, 
truth. Here, we have to emphasize that from the Gnostic point of view, the word psychology is explained in the following way. Psyche, the soul, and logos, which is the word, the way in which the spirit manifests to the psyche. So psychology, in Gnosticism, is a way in which the psyche discovers or unveils by itself in a direct way the mysteries of the spirit within, the mysteries of the human, which is another word, as you know, that I always explain, human, hum, spirit, and man, manas, the way in which the mind know about the spirit or the mysteries of life and death. This psyche, in different books, different lectures, we address as essence, soul, consciousness. And uh, sometimes we use the other term, anima, which is of course a Latin name or let a Latin word that describes the soul. Anima, psyche, consciousness, essence. Synonyms of uh, that hide the same meaning. So of course the consciousness, the soul, the essence, or the anima descends from the stars, descends from that which we call the monad, the spirit, the unity, which in the book of Genesis, it describes as Jehovah, Elohim. Jehovah, Elohim, is that uh, part of us related to the monad that begat the essence. And this is something that we have to comprehend when we read the book of Genesis from the psychological point of view. Each one of us has his own particular individual, Jehovah Elohim. And that essence that uh, is created or engendered by this uh, uh, monad is what we, what we call the consciousness. So that's why when we address the being, the spirit, we visualize the spirit, the monad, beyond this three-dimensional world, even beyond the mind. <coughs> and uh, when we refer to the consciousness, we understand that that consciousness is the reality of what we are. That's their own reality. Normally, the monad, that Jehovah Elohim that resides within each one of us in the highest part of our being, resides in the Milky Way, which is related with the sixth dimension. From there, that spirit projects the essence, and the essence descends from the Milky Way, from the galaxy, passes to the solar system, 
enters the planetary zone and finally enters into the womb of a woman. And that's precisely in the way in which psychologically we explain the dissension of the soul into the physical world. According to Kabbalah, the base, the foundation of the Tower of Babel has 12 doors and 72 pillars. Of course, by studying this carefully, we understand that the 12 doors of that Tower of Babel, which is a symbol of these uh, elements that we had to build, or that are built here in this physical world, has 12 doors or entrances. We stated that the monad resides in the Milky Way. Kabbalistically, astrologically, the Milky Way is symbolized as the 12 zodiacal signs. In every Kabbalistic book, you find always the 12 zodiacal signs, which are directly related with the 12 tribes of Israel. So, we enter into this physical world through any of uh, those 12 doors. We cannot enter in the 12th at once, but only by one. And that's why, astrologically, we say that we are being born in Virgo, or in Aquarius, or in Gemini, or in Capricorn, and any of the 12 signs of the Zodiac. Because this is how the essence leaves the Zodiac and enters to that door into to this physical world. That's why it is stated that it is round, related, of course, to the circle of time, because time is circular, and we come from eternity into the circle of time in order to build our own particular tower, our own particular, particular destiny. The 72 pillars, which always, uh, this, this number is always often uh, mentioned in the books of Kabbalah. It is stated, for instance, that uh, the name of God uh, has 72 uh, variations. There are 72 ways to name uh, or to utter the, the name of God. Of course, there are many books where some people had the job to work or to, to explain the 72 names in detail. But we, in Gnosticism, explain them in a simple way. Remember that we always address the men of Sohar, which is... Uh, imaginary entity, gigantic, whose head is symbolized by the infinite. The infinite uh, is uh, a compound of all the galaxies that exist in the universe. So that head of that imaginary man of, the so of Sohar, which is called the Arikampin, so the head is in the infinite, and of course, all the galaxies of that infinite rotate around that head. His chest is symbolized by one galaxy. It's called the, the macrocosmo. In that chest, you find the 12 zodiacal signs. It's in his heart. But then going low into his uh, waist, and then you find that the solar system, 
or any solar system of any galaxy rotates around the waist or the hips of that uh, gigantic man. The sun of any, any sun is precisely the center of that solar system. It shines in the sexual organs of that uh, Arikampin or the man of Sohar. And finally, going down into his body, we find that the earth is at its very feet. The feet of that man, the right feet, I mean the right foot, is on the ground and the left within the sea, the water. So that planet where he is standing, of course, is the planet Earth. This is how he described the whole uh, man. The infinite in Kabbalah is symbolized by the letter He, I mean by the letter Yod. Then the galaxy is represented by, by the letter He. Then the solar system by the letter Vav. And again, the letter He symbolizing the planet Earth. This is how we find the famous Tetragrammaton, which is the holy name of God. Yod He Vav He, that in Kabbalah is pronounced Yod Hava. And when we refer to the two polarities of that uh, entity, we said Jahava. Of course, in Kabbalah, the letters have certain numbers that we had to, to know. Because you know, when you talk about Kabbalah, you know that this uh, science is related with numbers. But uh, the Hebrew letters, which are 22, related with the 22 arcana, are related with certain numbers. So when you uh, pronounce the first letter of the sacred name of God, which is Yod, they have the value of 10. And then He has the value of 5. Vav has the value of 6. And He the value of 5 again. So this is how you find the secret of the 72 pillars, which means the 72 attributes related with the whole universe, hidden within the very base of the Tower of Babel, which is a physical body. In other words, let me explain uh, further. The first part of that man, which is the infinite, with all the galaxies, is symbolized with the letter Yod, whose value is 10. The second one, which is the galaxy, is symbolized by two letters, the Yod and the He which makes the addition of 15. Then the third one, which is the solar system, is symbolized by Yod, He, Vav, which make the addition of 10, 21. And the last, which is the earth, is Yod, He, Vav He, which makes the addition of uh, 26. If you add all of this, make the addition of 72. In other words, 
the galaxy received the influence of the infinite, which is symbolized by Yod. That's why you put Yod He. Then the solar system had the influence of the galaxy plus the Vav, which represents his own letter, his own value, is Yod He Vav. And then the Earth received the influence of the three worlds above. And that's why you said Yod He Vav He. In other words, the physical world, which is called the world of Asia, receives all the forces, all the powers from the higher dimensions, from the higher worlds, from the solar system, from the galaxy, from the infinite. This is why this physical body is a very complicated organism made by nature with the objective of placing in it the cosmic values that any one of us need in order to build what in Kabbalah is called the cosmos human. This is symbolized with the letter K, cosmos, and the letter H of human. This cosmos human is what we call the creature into the image of God, which reflects, you see, the image of God. <coughs> because uh, an image is something that is reflected, or the reflection of something. So God is God. It's perfect. But his image has to be reflected in all of the parts of ourselves. And that's why it is written symbolically in the book of Genesis that the human being is made into the image of God. It means that it's like a mirror that has to reflect all of that. And when that re when you reflects all of that, it's shown. It's, it's, it's showing all of that. Not only physically, but psychologically. And that's why it is stated there in the, in the Kabbalistic way that the foundation of the Tower of Babel has 12 doors and 72 pillars. Meaning that the foundation, the basis, in order to build what we had to build. Then... Adam and Eve, of course, as you know, is written in the book of Genesis, are the one that brings us into this physical world. And it is written that all of us are children of Adam and Eve. And many times we explained that Adam and Eve are a symbol of the two polarities, which in Taoism is called yin-yang. The masculine feminine forces which express in different ways. In this case, talking in relation with our entrance into this physical world, we know that we came from Adam and Eve, who are the symbol in this case, our father and mother. Our father is Adam, the masculine force, and our mother Eve, the feminine force. But, unfortunately, our father eats the apple or eats the fruit of the tree of good and evil and engenders through fornication. Because in the physical body of any human being, you have the blood, which is the fire in our organism. That's why we say that we are creatures with, with heat, with fire, due to the blood. That blood, of course, is a marvelous liquid, fluid, created in the different organs that we have. Mainly 
the impure blood that is created in the liver. When in the book of Genesis, we hear about the tempting serpent that induced or that tempt the man and the woman in the Garden of Eden, we have to understand and comprehend that the Garden of Eden, Eden means voluptuousness. So when the man and the woman are in the sexual act, they are in that Garden of Eden. And they are, of course, in, in that moment, being tempted by the serpent, which is nothing but the blood in our organism, that gives that uh, arouse in the sexual act. The arousal. The arousal, yeah. It's the arousal in the physical body. The man and the woman feel that arousal, and if they control that fire that comes in the very moment in the sexual act, then they can defeat that tempting serpent. That, of course, <coughs> comes from the liver. The liver is the organ that takes the inheritance from the previous kingdoms according to evolution. From the animal kingdom, of course, we inherit that arousal, animal desire that uh, we inherit since ancient times in the physical body. So when we have the physical body done, from the liver comes that arousal because the liver is connected to that element that we call ego, or the psychological aggregates that we have related with lust, anger, pride, vanity, laziness, gluttony, and all those animal elements that mistakenly the conventional psychology call human defects. But they are not human defects. They are animal elements. A human being has no type, no, those type of animal elements. The true one, of course. So, of course, our mother and father, in the moment of the sexual act, ignoring about the serpent of Eden, because they do not understand the symbol of Genesis, they think that there was a serpent that thousand years ago that appeared there in a couple in, the, in a little garden in the physical plane without ignoring that that is an actual action that always happens in any couple that are performing the sexual act. The serpent is always acting here and now. It's nothing from the past. It's present. So usually that serpent always conquers always tempt the couple, and the couple end always eating the apple, engendering there a creature. And this is how, unfortunately, all of us enter into this physical world through temptation. And enter to any of the twelve doors, and they start building the Tower of Babel. This is the way in which psychologically we have to comprehend that. So, when we appear, or when we enter into the womb of our mother, through the temptation of the serpent, and then, of course, we enjoy the psychic powers of any essence, of any consciousness, or the psychic powers of the spirit. The essence within the womb of our mother has all the awakened elements. Because in this case, for the essence, that womb of our mother is the same garden of Eden. That voluptuousness. Where the physical body is developed. Created. 
After nine months, that physical body is going out. Because during nine months is where the cosmos or the cosmical forces place within that fetus the 72 attributes that we need in order to build what we need to build. Seven plus two equals nine. Do you hear the numbers of uh, in Kabbalah, which are of course very very profound? The number nine is always related to the ninth sphere, to the sexual force. That's why the fetus endures nine months and goes out. That's the very foundation of the Tower of Babel. Then, of course, the the second floor or the second level of that Tower of Babel, it is stated that is squared with nine stories. The square is always the symbol of the four elements. And the nine stories are the nine doors, we will say, that the physical body developed, which are the nine uh, openings through which we store into our consciousness, into our psyche, all the impressions that comes in, from the physical world into our psyche. We have two ears. We have two eyes, which are four. We have two nostrils, which are six. We have one month, which is seven. We have the sexual organ, which is eight. Or better say, the anus is eight, and the sexual organ is nine. Because there are openings in the physical body. We have nine openings or doors. The rectum, in this way, is the door of exit in which we throw all of the waste that is no good for the human organism. But the nine door, of course, is a sexual organ. It's that door from which we take. In this case, we will say that the nine doors or the senses that we talk, the, we always talk about five senses, but uh, in the book of uh, the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord Krishna talks about the door, the sacred city of nine doors, which is a physical body. We have to take care of those uh, nine doors in order to know how to build the elements that we have to build inside of us. Many times, in different lectures, we talk about a personality. And of course, we need to build a personality which is a vehicle that uh, we build after, immediately after coming out from the womb of our mother. That element is necessary in order to communicate with other human beings, in order to recognize and to learn about the time in which we are born. Because every time that we enter into this circle of time, in this physical world, life is different. So we, we need to learn that and to know how to handle that time. And for that, we build, of course, within us, that that we call the personality. And that's precisely the crucial thing of this development. Because uh, most of the time, the parents ignore about that. Master Samael states clearly, we are born with the essence. 
The moment that we come out from the womb of our mother, the essence is there with all the psychic powers fully awakened. But the body starts building a personality by hunting. Or what we'll say it, by acquiring impressions. Because the personality is a vehicle in which we have the basis for communicating in different ways to the exterior world, the physical world. And that's why these nine stories that we're talking here, which are related with the nine doors of the physical body, they store impressions from Mother Nature and from humanity. So you find that uh, the square, which is the second base of this uh, Tower of Babel, is related to the four elements. Fire, air, water, and earth. The four elements surround us through the vital body. The vital body, which is the superior aspect of the physical body, is precisely that uh, element, that uh, body, tetradimensional vehicle that attracts all the forces of nature and uh, that starts building with those forces within the same four dimension the personality. In this moment, of course, <coughs> in which this personality is being built, it does it through the example. Because the physical body, from the zero to the seven years of age, develops the motor brain. You know that we're, when we are born, we cannot walk immediately. Little by little, our physical body is learning how to move. And uh, with time, we stand on our, our, our feet and we start walking and developing the motor center. Or we will say the motor brain. And... Uh, we also learn everything related with movements, as for instance, the language. We learn to talk. Little by little, our vowels, our throat is learning how to pronounce words and how to communicate through the language. And that's, of course, related with the instinctual center, where all these elements are placed in order for us to develop it. We will say that there, these are one or of the 72 pillars that we need to take in order to develop or elements, forces, powers. So the personality since is uh, being built related with the motor brain we will say the motor instinctual sexual brain is developed according to examples. Everything that is in relation with the pure example, nothing with precepts, only examples or imitation. So, of course, we state that at that time, Parents have to give a good example in order for their children to imitate through their personality good examples and to form a very 
steady personality that will be, of course, in accordance with the psychological elements and accordance with the essence. Because the essence that is there into that creature needs to grow, needs to develop as well. Unfortunately, in this day and age, humanity or people do not understand that the creature that is being born and that is in a new body needs to grow inside psychologically. The psyche, the essence, the consciousness needs to grow up. But they ignore about it and just uh, concentrate themselves in the development of the personality. The way in which this child will learn how to deal with life, how to face life. And uh, sometimes the child learns good manners, good behavior, because uh, his parents or her parents are behaving in the right way in front of them. Unfortunately, it is very rare, because most of the time, the behavior, the examples that the parents give unto the children from the zero to the seven years of that age, is terrible. And children developed a very uh, terrible personality based on bad examples, bad behavior. And they are, of course, repeating the same uh, attitudes or the same way of behaving of their, of their parents. That later, of course, in time, will be the basis for their life. When the <coughs> personality is being is done at the seven years of age when it's perfectly built. Unfortunately, is uh, had been built in the in the wrong basis, in the wrong examples, and continue its development from the seven to the fourteen years, in which the intellectual brain starts developing stronger. The intellectual brain located, of course, in the head. That intellectual brain also learns through the, through the doors of the senses by precept. At that age is when we enter into the school in order to learn how to write, how to read about sciences and many things that we learn in the school in order to develop the personality. But we, of course, forgot about the essence. And the personality start developing, and developing according to uh, this society and they don't pay attention only in a very rare cases to the essence. The essence is for God, and then uh, we place instead of that uh, the personality. And that's why the Bible calls uh, that type of element that uh, is the personality, they call it Nimrod. Nimrod is stated there. There was a powerful hunter before the Lord. Of course, the Lord in the Bible is a word uh, written instead of yod he vav he Because when you read the Bible, you, write, you read before yod he vav he But yod he vav he is the sacred name of God related with the world of Asia. So it says, when Nimrod was a powerful hunter before Yod-Heh, 
before the Lord. That means that he was hunting. Or the personality is of course trying to get all the information from this physical world. In order to be strong. And that's precisely what happened in each one of us. From child to adolescence. From childhood to adolescence, we are always hunting and hunting and hunting. And, uh, unfortunately, we forgot about the essence. And uh, when we reach uh, adolescence, we find that we have a very strong personality with a lot of information about our knowledge. But in most of the cases, we receive information in the school, universities, or colleges, about atheism. In which people ignore, or they don't care about, the presence of uh, the spirit within. And they deny it. And of course, it is because the personality is very strong. When we develop the personality without taking care of the essence, at the end the personality is very strong and the essence becomes very weak. And this is how we lose all the powers of the consciousness. All of those powers that we had from the beginning, when we came out of the womb, all of us are clairvoyant, clairaudient, telepath. We have intuition. We have all of the psychic powers there fully developed. That's why when you see a child, a newborn, his essence is there fully developed. Or we will say not fully developed, but the powers, the senses of the psyche are fully developed there in that creature. He doesn't only see like us, the physical world. Children see the fourth dimension, fifth, sixth, and seventh. They see the angels and the devils as well, which are in other dimensions. Very clear. But of course, since parents ignore about all of this because they are already blind, they are blind by the lure of the serpent. Remember that the book of Genesis says uh, clearly that when the man and the woman ate from the fruit or were defeated by the temptation of the serpent, their eyes were open and they discovered that they were naked. Of course, the eyes of the physical world were open and they discovered that they didn't have knowledge. And that's how they started developing knowledge. But remember, for instance, that according to the Bible, Adam, which in this case, when it was in Eden, before the fall, it is stated there that he was giving names to the animals. This is something very profound. Because when the essence is pure, when it is not fallen into the temptation of the serpent, then you can name animals. Animals in Hebrew means nefesh. Nefesh is soul. Ohaya, the living soul, which are related with the elements of the psyche that we have to develop. Those 72 pillars that we have there that we name. In other words, that we discover and that we are conscious of it. When you develop your senses, you are conscious of other dimensions, of other elements. You name them means that you know how to communicate with these elements animas, as we will say it in Latin, or animals. That why it's written that Adam was naming animals, or giving name to the animals. Because they, they, he was capable of communicating with other dimensions, with other forces, with other animals, other souls. But in the case of Nimrod, is the opposite. He's a powerful hunter of animals. I mean that he kills animals. You see that? 
This is how is uh, the meaning, uh, psychological meaning of, of uh, is hidden in the Bible. When you hunt for animals, meaning that you are killing animals, you are killing the particles of your own consciousness in order to become strong in your personality. While Adam is naming animals, he is building, he is growing up spiritually. And he is in communication with the animals. But Nimrod do the opposite. He kills animals or animals. Which in this case is not that he is killing outside in the forest. Because the garden represents the physical body. To kill an anima means to destroy your own psyche, your own consciousness, for the sake of developing the personality. And this is precisely what happened in this day and age. People go there in the school, in life, and start developing a very strong personality, hunting and hunting and hunting for knowledge, killing the essence, and developing a strong personality. And that's why it is written there in the book of Genesis <coughs> that this Nimrod stated, let us build a city. In other words, we will say it a civilization. Based, of course, in hunting. Because he was the king. He was the head at that time of uh, those people that wanted to grow up or to build a tower. He said, let us build a city in a tower in order uh, to be one. If in case a great flood comes again, we know how to deal with it. But now that we are of one speech, now that we have one language. Psychologically speaking, of course, is it, it is related with the way in which in this day and age people only are concerned with the personality. In this way, we will say they speak the same language. But of course, according to the objective or the goal of life, of the cosmos, the goal of life is to develop spiritually, psychologically, to create, we will say, or to develop the unity, to acquire the unity of all the elements that we have within in one. Because now they are dispersed. Or they are in potentiality. Within our physical body, within our psyche, within our mind. And the goal of, the, of the, what we call the self realization of the being. Is to unite all of those elements in one. Or as we will say it in uh, biblical terms. To gather all of the children of Israel. In one. All those children are psychological elements, parts of the essence that we need to unite in one. And of course, by discovering within each one of us our level of being. That's why the Master Samael on the or always state that we have to discover in which level of the being we are. Each one of us has this different level of being. So there is a difference. Psychologically speaking, within each one of us, that difference has to be discovered and a society has to be established. And that difference, precisely, between each one of us, that difference is related with the vocation or with the level of being that we have. We have to recognize the difference between your brother and your sister or your friend and you. There is always a deep difference. But unfortunately, people lost that capacity. 
Now we cannot see the difference in the psychological way. We are so superficial. We even ignore or we don't believe that the soul, the psyche exists. Some people don't believe in the spirit or God in other words. They think that the personality is everything and this is it. So therefore, in this day and age, or in ancient times, people are building a false society, which is represented by the Tower of Babel, in which instead of harmoniously <coughs> building an essence, a personality, that's precisely the harmony of the development of any society, of any individual. Because we need a personality in order to communicate with our neighbor, with society, in order to, to know how to behave in this uh, uh, life. We need a personality. Without a personality, it will be impossible to communicate. But we don't have to forget about the essence, about our consciousness, which is the problem if you observe in this uh, day and age, people completely ignore about the essence. They don't care about it. They care only about the personality. They ignore that according to Gnostic studies, we have knowledge related with our own particular essence, which is called the innate knowledge that relates to our spirit, to our own being, or as we say, to our own vocation. Capabilities that cannot be taken by anybody. When you discover your own capacities, psychologically speaking, capabilities of your being, then you become somebody special that can help in many ways, society and yourself. And that's precisely the difference between you and me and between the rest of the world. Each one or each individual in the world has that vocation, has capacity that you don't have, that I don't have, and that only that person has. To discover that and to recognize your own is to build a very beautiful society in which you have a place and your friend has a place and nobody can take that. And everything is related with the being, with, with the forces of the psyche. That is the innate knowledge that we need to develop, which are related with the 72 pillars that we are talking here that are given unto us from the stars, from the spirit. And the other type of knowledge that we have is a borrowed knowledge. We borrowed this knowledge. For instance, in this moment, you are listening to this type of knowledge and you are placing that in your personality. But you can read a book, you can uh, watch TV, or you can hear the radio, and you can watch a movie, and all of that knowledge, whether positive or negative, go directly into your personality. That's a borrowed knowledge. So we have to make a difference and to understand what is the innate knowledge and the borrowed knowledge. The borrowed knowledge is precisely in the personality. It's what we call Nimrod, the powerful, powerful hunter that has to build and to be powerful and only to deal with life. But unfortunately, this Nimrod, as we know, according to the Bible at that time, they forgot about the spirit. And they said, let us build this Tower of Babel, or this society, this city, in order to be one. But then it's written that God descended to see the tower that the men were building, and the city that the men were building. 
And then discover, or the, our own particular monad, we will say, our own particular spirit will descend from heaven and to see that the tower that the men are building is based only in the superficiality, in the personality. It has nothing to do with him. Because according to Kabbalistic books, it is written that there were three types of people in that tower of Babel. That was the first one, they said, let us go up there and rest. I mean, in the top of the tower. Build the tower, go on to the top and rest. Or to establish ourselves there. To establish, of course, on the top as uh, leaders. Those people were the ones that were scattered to the earth. The second type of uh, people, they said, let us go to the type and make war. Instinctual people that develop, of course, the motor, instinctual, sexual center, and only think in becoming powerful through uh, wars, to fights, to battles, which are very abundant in this day and age. People that uh, are so strong in their personality that they no longer are in contact with their particular individual being, with their own particular job, Chava. So those people, of course, are atheists or really don't care about the spirituality. And they are building, of course, they are part of this society or this Tower of Babel. And they go on top of the tower and make war. So those people, according to the law of evolution and devolution, they de devolve into monkeys. Enter into the body of devolving animals because they are no longer uh, in contact with their own particular monad. The third type is all those related, of course, with the emotional center. Those people that uh, want to worship God or want to enter into the path, but through the wrong way. This third type says, let us go up and build an idol. And precisely those of the third type that say, let us go to the top of the tower and build an idol, are the ones that were scattered to the earth and had confusion of tongues. In which, or what, what is the base of this confusion of tongues, of this type of people that uh, worship idols? Well, are those people that identify with the personality of some individuals that are related, of course, with this Tower of Babel in which all of us uh, are in. The third level of the Tower of Babel, it is written, was triangular in a spiral with 42 uh, turns. 42 turns in, in a triangular way in the spiral. Of course, this is in relation with, uh, with the solar force. The triangle is over the symbol of the three brains that we have, that we are explaining here. We have the intellectual brain, we have the emotional brain, and we have the instinctual motor sexual brain that we developed in different epochs of our life. For the, for the 21 years of age, or the 14 to the 21, we developed the emotional center. <coughs> and from there on, until the 42 uh, years of age, we enter into the solar epoch. 
the solar epoch or the solar force that enters through the three brains in different turns, different ways. Many times we have been talking about uh, the solar force and we have to understand that in our physical body this solar force is active for 42 years. But especially from the 21st uh, or 21 years of age to the 42. It's very active, the solar force. And in that way, of course, we establish our position, our place in this society, in this life. Unfortunately, the solar light, the solar force, is squandered to the three brains and through the personality. There are many individuals that waste the solar force in the motor center with sports, with uh, violent uh, sports, like boxing, karate, etc. And uh, they also squander the solar force in the emotional center through uh, the experience of uh, negative emotions, like drugs, uh, degenerated music of any type, which is very common in this day and age. And of course, the brain that is more abused is the intellectual brain, through which we receive information from the seven years of age and before that age. And all our life, we are abusing of the intellectual center and fortifying the personality, Nimrod. We will say in simple words that each one of us has a Nimrod in his head, in his heart, in his sex. So always, we are always hunting and hunting. Coming to my mind, Isa, Isao and Jacob, which represent the opposites. Jacob was concerned with the development of the essence and Isao was concerned with the development of the personality. That's why Kabbalistically we always say that Isao was the offspring of Nimrod with time. Because he's also related with the allure of the, uh, of the serpent, which is the blood in the human organism. So you find here how this uh, Tower of Babel is now uh, fully developed in each one of us. And of course, the 42 elements or 42 attributes related with the astral light, with the solar light that we had to develop are developed in a negative way. The triangular part of that Tower of Babel is related with the astral solar force. When we always point the solar force, we always point the triangle. Keter, Chochmah, Bina. We always point the three brains. Intellectual brain, emotional brain, and motor brain. The three primary forces of the universe through which the solar light expresses itself. This solar light has to put in activity. I repeat, 42 elements related with uh, the superior emotion in which we learn how to transform the instinct into intuition. There are animal parts of us that behave mechanically through the personality. Whether they are from the motor center, emotional center, or intellectual center. These 42 parts 
that we had to uh, awake and to put an activity to the emotional center is in relation with the mastery. That's why in ancient times, Egyptians talk about the 42 uh, judges of karma or the 42 John men that are related with these 42 uh, aptitudes, the 42 ways in which we have to act through the heart. This is what we call goodwill. Unfortunately, since we are a slave of the animal elements, we act in these 42 aspects in a negative way. And that's why uh, we are judged in the relation with our karma. The judgment of our karma is related in, in the way in which we act through these 42 forces. Remember that the heart is in relation with the solar force. In the heart we have that which in Kabbalah we call Tifereth, the solar force, the soul, the good will, in which we have to act with compassion. Many people talk about compassion, but they know that this compassion is related with 42 attributes or 42 forces that we have to awake and discover in the way in which we have to transform the solar energy, the solar force, in the three brains. Why is it in relation with the heart? Because in the heart we have the atom nous. And this atom nous is in relation with Jacob in the Bible. The way in which we learn how to control the lure of the serpent, which is the blood. The blood that comes from the liver enters into the heart, and in the heart is how we transform that animal action that always acts in a negative way to these 42 forces and to learn how to do it in a positive way. In the book of the dead of the Egyptians is written there the negative confession. The negative confession in which the initiate that learn how to transform all of those negative forces into positive is allowed to pronounce a negative conf confession because he learned positively through meditation how to transform by one by one these 42 elements into positive and to act accordingly and is becoming or, or is acquiring that we call or, uh, in other lectures the part of duty the way in which you transform the solar light positively in the three brains. That's, of course, the symbol of the third level of the Tower of Babel, which is triangular with 42 turns in a spiral. These 42 turns in the way, of course, that you learn to do it because the turns are the symbol of the returnings of reincarnations in which we come and learn little by little how to act positively. It's coming into my mind this very moment, the ascension of Elijah, Elijah the prophet, that after receiving the garments from Eliao or Elias, because he was following always El Elijah, he, Elijah, like similar names, right? El El Elias or Elijah and Elijah was the disciple. So he was having the garments of Eliyahu or Elijah already. And he was walking. And they said that some children came and told him, look the bow, the bow head walking or, or going up, whatever. They were making a, a mockery of uh, his bow head. And he says that Elijah or Elijah in this world turned and pronounce some uh, maledictions, damnations against these children. And two she-birds she came from the, from the woods and killed 42 of them. 
When you read that, uh, I mean, literally, you said, what? I mean, two she birds killing 42 children? That's in the name of God or whatever this prophet, what was this prophet doing? No, it's in relation with psychology. These children symbolize part of his consciousness that were acting in a negative way. Or the part of the consciousness that were acting with this 42 uh, aspect that we are talking here in the wrong way. By, by killing them is how he, of course, turned everything and became a prophet, a right prophet. Because to become a right prophet of Yod Chava, your own particular Jehovah Elohim, is to know how to transform these 42 elements of the solar light. Of course, those are given unto us little by little from childhood until the 42 years of age. And unfortunately, these 42 elements of the solar light, because it's the whole youth, you know, the solar force, until the 42 years of age, the ego is taking it, or the personality, and using it as a base in order to be strong. In other words, these 42 elements that we should have opened and awakened is dor- are dormant and, and used in the, in the wrong way. Solar forces, solar potencies. And those are the children that came when Elijah was rising or in his ascension towards the prophet of God or becoming a prophet of God. And immediately, of course, kill the 42 of them. But that immediately is not, of course, as the Bible explains, in one shot. That's a process. You also, if you want to become a prophet of God, you have to kill 42 children. But those children, of course, are negative uh, transformation of your consciousness in relation with the solar light within you. It's not that you are going to, to go in the physical world and kill 42 children. No. It's, it, that's, that element is within you. Because the song symbolizes precisely the child of God. And this is how you understand and comprehend why also in Gnosticism we say that there are 42 judges. And the law of karma is in relation also with the sun. That's why Michael, which is the, the angel related with the sun, is represented with one scale and one sword in the hand. That's the scale of justice in which the solar light is always measured, and when you die physically, and you go before the 42 judges, if judge knows how to handle, or knows about the handle of one part of that solar light, which is in relation with the law of equilibrium, or, or the law of uh, the trogo auto egocratic, or cosmo common trogo auto egocrat, the law of equilibrium. But in order to be uh, uh, in equilibrium with that law, you have to know how to handle these 42 forces. And that's why it's stated that the third part of that tower was precisely related with 42 turns in a triangular way. It's pure psychological, cabalistical statement. But only by knowing and walking on the path you understand. And the last part of the, of the tower was cylindrical. With 72 stories. That cylindrical aspect of course is in relation with the cerebral and spinal nervous system. In relation with the mind. Remember that when we study from the bottom, we say it's physical body, vital body, astral body, and then the mental body, the mind. That's the end. That's why we state always that the top of the Tower of Babel is the moon. Because unfortunately, our mind is lunar. Meaning that the mind, the lunar mind that we have, is always reflecting the solar light. And that the outcome of this personality that we have is precisely that. In the mind, we reflect and we like to uh, worship idols. That's why it stated that, that the third type of people that were building that Tower of Babel 
is with the people that say, let us go build the tower, and on the top of the tower we put an idol and worship the idol. And that's pre- the, the problem of, uh, of this society, or these groups in this day and age, including the Gnostic groups. There is a confusion of tongues because the different groups are following personalities, idols. They forget that the unity that we need to build is inside, not outside. And they identify with personalities. That's why the Master Samael on the earth, when he was alive, he always said, I don't give five cents. I don't give a, a nickel from my, for, for my person. When he says for my person, he's talking about his personality. The personality is only a vehicle. You see, we said he died. But what, what was that died in 1976? Was the personality that he was using? Because we know that Samael on the or was precisely the, essence, the consciousness, the being that came as an avatar to give that message. And when he was in the physical plane, he was said, don't follow me. He was referring, of course, to his personality. Because it's just something that is being born in its time, grows in its time, and dies in its time. He says all of that in all of his books. There is not a future for the personality. That's why it's stupid to call a master the personality of somebody else. The master is inside, not outside. But the people that do not understand the, the doctrine, that are not serious, that do not study, they form idols. In other words, they worship personalities. And some personalities liked to be worshipped. And that's a problem. Some people think that the whole thing of life is to become powerful. In this physical world. And they do not understand. That the only one that wants to become powerful in this physical world. Is Nimrod. That why it is stated that the Nimrod make war against God. But it is not as the ignoramuses think. That this Nimrod was making war to a certain God there in the clouds. Because when you see the building of the Tower of Babel of course. Physically, in many images or graphics, you see that the top is reaching the clouds. And in the mind of those ignoramuses that do not understand the myth, the symbol behind the myth, they think that that God that is written in the Bible is there in the clouds. Now, in this day and age, because we have airplanes and rockets that go into the space, they no longer say that there is in the clouds. They say that there is in the space, some far beyond a gigantic being. Right. And of course, so Nimrod was trying to make war to, to that, uh, what we call marionette, to that puppet of the uh, uh, ignorant multitudes that never existed and doesn't exist because God is within. When you forgot that God is within, inside of you, when you forgot that you make you have to make the unity of that God within, and then you try to make that unity outside. And that's why people in this day and age are trying to, to, to make one language, one speech, but it's confusion. Because people only see differences in each one of us in relation with the personality. How much money you have, you have a strong personality if you have a lot. You have no money, you are nobody. They forgot to see inside. For instance, this see this, this great master, the Dalai Lama. He is a master that I admire. I see how he is really developing his inner being. 
is in contact with his own monarch, with his particular Jehovah Elohim, and at the same time, he is developing a very wise personality. But his personality is not just based in science, it's just based only in material things, only in bricks, you know, but also in his spirit. Because it's what written in the Bible. He said, let us make bricks from, from clay. What is the clay? It's just, it's, it's just the matter. The matter of this physical world. You take the clay, you make bricks, and you make a city, you make a, 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 a tower. That's precisely the way in which people now in this day and age behave. With their mind. They just make bricks. In other words, they gave value to material things. If one brick of that tower falls down, they are so worried. They have to build it. They have to, because this society, they don't care about if the one that was putting that brick falls dead. Or it falls dead. It doesn't matter. Take it out. Another, another mason. Another person here to put more bricks and to make a strong this society will appear. So they don't care about the individual inside but only about the material things. And this is how this society is. It's another tower of Babel, in which there are confusion, in which people are placed in different positions, in different occupations, based only in the personality. And that personality is a hunter. It's Nimrod. They don't care about God. They, want to make, they are making even war to God. So do you understand that? And that's precisely one of the most important things to understand because when we enter into this knowledge, our personality also tends and said, let us build a group. Let us build, build a new group now that will be called with another name. There's a group there that we call, oh, let us call the new order. Let's call another goal that is called Aga or Iga or Ahiakak. And every group is having or building a particular idiosyncrasy. And let us put on top of that tower an idol. And everybody is, of course, following an idol. Thinking, oh, if you don't worship this idol, then you are not right. You are doing the wrong thing. This is, it, it's, just, it's just not the way. The way is psychological. The personality is important, yes. The groups are necessary. That's why in this group that we are in, we respect all groups and we welcome all of them. But we are not saying, oh, our group is better. And in order to be in our group, you have to worship this idol. Or in other words, this personality of this individual because he is the one that follows after Samael Aum Beor. This only one individual that is the head of all the doctrine that we represent, and he's Samael on Beor. It's a wisdom, his wisdom. And he, he, he's not even, he, he, he said, I am only a messenger. Because the knowledge in, in itself belongs to the universe. But if we forgot that we had to make a unity within and to discover that unity in each one of us, and to make a society of that, and then we follow into confusion of tongues. And then we start following precepts or concepts of personalities that did, didn't understand about the Tower of Babel. That's why when you read the Bible, you find that immediately after, immediately after Noah reaches the Mount Ararat, immediately his descendants are being multiplied and then comes from, from Ham, the, the, the third son of, uh, of uh, Noah, comes Canaan, who was already uh, damned by Noah. And from Canaan comes uh, Cush. And from Cush, Nimrod. And Nimrod builds the Tower of Babel. You see? And this is precisely in, in, from the Gnostic point of view that we have to be careful. Some Elon Beor, in this way, represents the Noah that reaches Ararat, the meaning reaches the higher of self-realization. 
Now we are following his precept, his doctrine. But we are in a confusion of tongues. And there are many groups that state that in order to be in the right path, we have to worship an idol. And those that said, let us worship an idol on the top of the Tower of Babel, are the ones that enter into confusion of tongues. And this is precisely what is in, the, in this day and age. Everybody is confused. Because they said, you have to follow this. No, this organization, politics, you see, in their personality. We have to comprehend and understand that each one of us has a different level of being and different personality. We have to respect that and we know that there are some people that are suitable for this group, other people suitable for all this other group, but we have to understand that and not to point and say, if you are not with this group, you are then condemned or you are bad or you are wrong because that this is just Nimrod. Nimrod that is created in a confusion of tongues. Another tower of Babel. There are people that take the Dostic doctrine or the knowledge of any religion from the motor instinctual center. Motor brain. Others in the emotional brain. And others in the intellectual brain. But only those that have an equilibrium in the three brains are the one that build the right tower, which is inside, which is the men of Sohar. The men of Sohar is the contrary of the Tower of Babel. It's not by following anybody, any personality, or any group, the way that we self-realize ourselves, by make, but by making a unity, and being faithful to the doctrine of Samael on the or. Because we are in the time of the end in this day and age. And we have to comprehend the way in which we have to make that unity. That self-realization of the being within. And stop and stop worshipping idols. Because only Nimrod worship idols. And remember that that Nimrod exists inside of us. It's not outside. These 72 stories of the final part of the Tower of Babel, of course, are the way in which the mind utilizes the foundation or the basis of this life, physical life, in a very wrong way. But if we learn how to awake the seven serpents of fire, and we learn how to make seven star cases, or st- staircases that will connect all the stories of that tower, which in this case symbolizes the whole structure of what we are right now. From physical, vital, astral, mental, and the personality. Remember that. All of those elements that we name here, the base of the Tower of Babel, round with 12 doors and 72 pillars, is a physical plane. The vital plane is quad- quadrangular with nine stories, which are the nine senses or the nine doors to which we store many things into our psyche. The third is the triangular with 42 turns, which represents those 42 elements or vital solar forces that we need to put in equilibrium in order to enter and to become a vehicle of our own particular God. If not, we do the contrary, which is normally what people do in his personality or their personality. And the final one is a cylindrical one that represents the mind, the brain, the spinal nervous system, which is the vehicle of the mind with 72 stories. In other words, we develop that for our personality. Those 72 stories, or finally, that in, in the mind, is what Nimrod uses for, for his own development. The, the personality. There is as many Nimrods in this society as many men and women. And each one of them is, of course, or making war against his own particular being, 
all scattered because they are, of course, lazy. They want just to rest on top, make a lot of money. That's what the people do in the motor brain. To accumulate a lot. And when they reach certain age, just to rest like, like logs. Lazy ones. Other ones want to go to the top and make war in order to be powerful. In order to be remembered. Like, like Attila, like Hitler, like many other military uh, personalities that might to win war and to conquer the world for what? For certain ideologies. And the other ones, as I remember, as I'm telling you, are the spiritual ones. That wants to make that tower, but to put on top of that an idol. And there were many idols in the past, and still there are many idols in the present. People that idolize certain individual. If such and such person tells me that I have to marry this one, I have to do it. Because this person is a very old Gnostic, and he knows a lot. So therefore, if he says that, I will do it. That, that, that's stupid. You, see? you have to follow your own being. Not to follow personalities. To respect and honor the elders, the ones that give the knowledge. But you have to follow your own particular individual God. If you put your, your steps, your feet outside of the path, that's wrong. The path is inside your being. And of course, receiving guidance in order not to go in the wrong way. But always meditate in any advice. Otherwise, we fall into many mistakes. And, of course, we become uh, entangled in this Tower of Babel. Do you have questions? So be aware that each one of us is a Tower of Babel, really. And each one of us in group make another tower. The society in itself is a big tower. And of course, the whole groups of this, or the whole humanity, is also a big city and a big civilization with a big tower of Babel. And this, this society of this day and age is really a, a big tower of Babel. It's a big, big confusion, a great confusion in the world. But if it's not confusion within each one of us, if we learn how to be meek and to follow our own being, you cannot confuse. Master Samael on Veor stated, when the Elohim, when the superior beings, wants to punish humanity because they are no longer in contact with their own being, but only following Nimrod, then they says they confuse them in order to punish them. And that confusion enters to the personality of Nimrod. Only those that follow their being and do not allow to be confused are not punished. Question. No, 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 physical. The question is, what is the meaning of saying that the monad resides in the Milky Way? The meaning of that is that every single star in the Milky Way is a physical vehicle of a fohat, which is not three-dimensional, that resides in the seventh dimension or zero dimension. For hot means fire. A fiery element, fiery element, for hot, from which the flame of our own being descends. In other words, we are connected, psychologically speaking, to one star, to one particular for hot. That's why we said that we descend from the stars, from the Milky Way. But not three-dimensionally speaking. Three-dimensionally speaking, of course, we find stars, planets, comets, whatever in the galaxy. We're talking about psychologically. That was it, the psyche. 
And you have to understand that for that, you have to comprehend that the monad is within the superior dimensions connected to any of those four hats that the Bible calls Elohim. Yes, of course, <coughs> if you add that, because every world has its own meaning. Here you find 6, 3, 8, in relation with the numbers. that We are talking here about the values of the worlds of the men of Sohar. We said that the first is the value of 10, the second is the value of 15, the second is 21, and the fourth is 26. The question is, if we add those numbers and we have the synthesis, those, those, uh, do those numbers have any meaning? Of course. Kabbalistically, they have. 26 is equal to 8, right? 26 is equal to 8, and 8, of course, is the patience of Job. Is the way in which we uh, uh, expiate the karma. And in this physical world, all of us are being born and you know, to expiate the karma, of course. That's a way not to develop. So you see, the Tower of Babel, really, if you read carefully, is a symbol. It's a psychological symbol. In which all of us come into this uh, physical world and develop if we follow the measures of the Ark of Noah, and then we are going to be really not fulminating towers. Because according to Kabbalah, the 16 Arcanum is a fulminating tower. And that fulminating tower is the Tower of Babel, which is, represents each one of us. Each one of us is in itself and by itself a fulminated Tower of Babel. Hmm. If you observe yourself, uh, uh, unless you enter into contact with your being and don't make the cosmic forces to fulminate you. Hmm. Remember, I repeat, the three cl uh, types of people in the Tower of Babel. The ones that go on top and make war turned, according to the evolution, into monkeys going to clip off. The ones that want just and go and rest there on top of the tower, they are scattered everywhere. And the ones that m wants to make an idol and to worship that idol on top of that are the ones that enter into confusion of tongues. And some of them, they don't, they abandon the building of that tower or the building of their own uh, being the development of its own uh, psychology. Where does Babel come from? Babel comes from bubble. Bubbles. Babel, of course, is, uh, is uh, something uh, in relation with, uh, with God, uh, against God. Because El is, is God. Bob El. We will say uh, a tower built uh, without taking in account the spirit. Or something that you build inside of you and your psyche and your personality without taking in account God. And that's precisely the, the meaning of the Tower of Babel. To build something and don't care about the rest. About God, about anything. This is how this society in this day and age is built. Many Nimrods in this day and age, they are getting together and they want to build a society, uh, an atheist as a society. They don't believe in their own being, in their own self. Only in their personality, and this is it.
And that's why when somebody acts in that way, they call it Nimrod. So don't be a Nimrod. So there's no more questions. Thank you very much. And have a good weekend. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah,